that I wouldn't I feel good I knew that I wouldn't So good So good I got a year Welcome to a date with Danu right here on Hi TV, your luxury channel. When I'm seated at the mansion and I'm, when I'm dressed in one of these suits, you know it's time to have some fun questions thrown at some fabulous personalities. Now the year is about to end, but when it comes to the year end, there's always this one person who everyone warns. But in his tight schedule, he gave us a little bit of his time. Without this man, we would have never danced in our country. He recreated how our dance moves should be. He is a phenomenal entertainer. I'm so happy to say I share his alma mater with me as well. And also, he has a brilliant family. And they are all so talented. I'm happy to have the famous Sunil from Gypsies on my show today. I'm so happy that he's here. I'm, I'm literally having a fan moment here. Thank you so very much for coming. Mrs. Sunil, <laughs> so great to have you on board. Uh, tell me, you have entertained us for years and up to date there isn't one person who will sit and listen to your songs. They'll always just jump off their seat the minute they see you or hear you. Thank Why, you. Have yeah. you ever been approached to enter politics? Yeah, there have been... Uh Multiple locations? Not in the recent times, even in the 80s, in, if I may remember right, mm. must have been in uh, towards the latter part of 80s. I was approached by a top politician in Murtu area. By I totally reject, rejected the thing, because not because of anything, because of the ban. And of course, my focus with the gypsies was much greater. So if had I entered politics, I'm sure I would have, uh, sort of, uh, to a certain extent, that music part of it would have been affected. Affected, yeah. for sure. So now, especially when everything is just so crippled, where we are trying to figure out, do we even have a constitution? Have you ever been approached now? There are so many people who ask me to sort of come into politics. But in the first place, in my way of looking at uh, getting into any area, if you are competent, we have the education, then it's all right. Yeah. I don't have that background. I do. I know nothing about politics. And uh, without education, if you enter into any field, I mean, education means like you know, that particular field. field. If you have knowledge no knowledge, yeah. Field, yeah. If you have the knowledge, most certainly. But to enter into politics, you should have, in my way of looking at it, you should have at least basic qualifications, like at least GCE advanced level. Mm. If you have if you sort of give that as a criteria to enter politics, that would be great for Sri Lanka because all these years we have seen people who have entered into politics, they know nothing about politics and this is why Sri Lanka is in such a state today. Yeah. Now, the first time I met Sunil, this is something that I need to say. I was at St. Peter's College. It was a college day. I, I was in grade 10. And we, we were in the choir at that time. And it was like an evening carnival kind of a thing that they have organized. It was closer to the 80th year of St. Peter's College. Yeah. And you came. I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> it was literally <laughs> like a heartbeat moment. Mm -hmm. That's when I got to know that you were a Pete Wright. Mm -hmm. um, how was it in school? Were you, always, were you always a singer back in school? No. I sort of took part in a lot of uh, the, yeah, music, uh, musical events, like singing competition and all that, but I was never able to sort of uh, achieve anything there or win any awards or anything like that because that, uh, St. Peter's had quite a lot of good musicians there. Yeah, so true. I was not able to sort of 
get anywhere near them. They were all brilliant. Most musicians were brilliant, so I could not do anything in school, frankly. Okay. I was just a very average, musically, with it. even now, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if, that you, if you call that average, <laughs> we need to get into a break. When we do come back on the other side, there is one phenomenal lady in their family. She is gorgeous and I got the privilege of working with her one year ago and she's simply amazing. So much of fun to be around. I'll be joined by her when we do come back after the break right here on A Date With Them. Welcome back to the show. I'm happy to have Manisha Pereira in the studios with me. Your conversation with her was all about this. Gluco rasa mami, gluco rasa mami, kochera kevat madi vena gluco rasa mo. True, no? How many times I sang this? I grilled it into a year. Please give me some utvas uswat the jujubs. I never got it. So uh, it's fine. I'll forgive you for it. Tell me, how is it to be born to such a superstar? I think for the outside world, it's yeah. like that. For us, he's our father, you know, and. Yeah. But he is someone who calls a spade a spade. There is no filter there. Yeah. And, and how, how, how is that? I think most of us inherited that from him. <laughs> so for us, it's not like some, anything new. Like we don't yeah. think of it like, oh my God, that's such a great quality. Because we're all like that. I can't fake it with people. Mm. I don't have many friends. I only have Dimut and Taranga as my best friends. That's enough proof to know that, you know, I mean. You don't put up with I, I don't too much of frills. With, no, I don't. Okay, yeah. and it's much more easier that much way. Much more easier that way. Okay, so uh, going back to your music, um, you have always sung about things which are quite Sri Lankan and like who, who would have ever thought, thought a song called Kotta Mali will do so well. Uh, why keep it so local and so, you know, very relatable to Sri Lanka? Kotta Mali was actually a kind of an accidental thing in the sense like, you know, it was not planned as such. The guy who imports Kottamali to Sri Lanka uh. happens to be a very close friend of Pial. Oh, my right. Brother. right. So, when uh, Pial was invited for the birthday, I think his 60th or 50th birthday, I guess. So, Pial wanted to sort of give him a sort of a surprise by uh, writing a song on Kottamali. Mm. That's how it happened. We never, Gypsies never had any idea of doing a song. Uh, about Kottamali, which is due to this friend, right. his birthday, that Pial happened to sort of uh, get a song done for his mm. birthday. Mm. So that is why he presented the song and uh, he eventually uh, showed it to me and I said that this is good for us, for the gypsies to do it. That's how it happened, the whole thing is, was not a planned thing, it wasn't a planned thing. Okay, and in today's world, there's so much of competition to music. Like, you know, we have seen music even evolving into just a music video and not even into a song anymore. Yeah. Um, what is your take on it? Because today, like, the last thing people want is to know how great the song is. They want to know how good the visual is. Yeah. But that's not from a listener's point of view, but from a production or the producer's point of view or the singer's point of view. What is your take? Do you think it's always core music? No, like, you know, certain songs, like the video may add a lot of impact, a lot of color to the song. But not all songs, but certain songs without any video, 
the song will still run the distance. Uh, what do you think about the videos that have come out recently with a lot of SNM and bananas and the whole works? Like these are the new kind of music videos and this has had a debate on social media. Yeah. What is your take on it? Although you're not on social media, I just want to know. I'm sort of totally, I mean, uh, now with regard to all these modern things, is it a modern thing that's happening in the... Yeah, like... Uh, squeezing a sausage and things uh, like that. Yeah. I don't think he has even seen that. <laughs> that I knew he's confused and asking me to look what? You have not seen it? No. I haven't it's, seen it. It's not child friendly, don't watch it. <laughs> no, no, I think he's all free, but it's just that he hasn't seen that. Yeah, he has not seen it. Okay. But people should be able to sort of tolerate that kind of thing. It's all, in the, I mean, depends on that particular individual. Yeah. How, how he wants to, as long, but, but certain things like, uh, they are not sort of, uh, telecast on national channel or anything any on any one of these uh, popular channels yeah. they are mainly on internet internet so it all depends on the individual if he feels it's okay uh, i mean if he feels it's within uh, i mean levels where the family would be able to sit together and watch uh, that's it that's all it, it may not be sort of sort of, to certain people it may affect in a big way so don't switch on exactly. knock it off yeah. but only your children watch either and yeah huh? that's the easiest way to do uh. all right let's get into a break we'll see you on the other side with sticky city In this segment, we speak about a few sensitive matters. But I know that you are someone who is very open. And I still remember an interview that you gave while I was working for my first radio station. And uh, there was a time when your marriage was crunch time. And you were so public about it. You spoke about it and you said, hey, I made a mistake. And now I want to work things out. How did you pass that dark cloud? And how was it for your family? And how, how did you sort of embrace it? Well, it affected the family in a big way, but of course they were very small at the time. But the thing, I mean, when you're married and you're committed to a relationship, you sh there are certain things that you shouldn't do, but you still do it. Yeah. And I have done it. Mm. I don't think it's right. It will definitely affect that relationship and the family, born family, uh, with regard to children and wife and everything will sort of Go, yeah. yeah he'll break up and it, it's, it's not the right thing it's not like you know it may be s certain situation that has pushed you into certain things and uh, and greed for certain things and uh, but I still say where I have gone wrong I have done wrong I still say that's wrong so what's the age gap between you and your wife 15. My gosh! <laughs> Cradle snatcher! <laughs> Cradle snatcher! <laughs> How did you all meet? Uh, I met her at a show in Morodua. Uh, uh, and you, everything went... <laughs> no, my mum was fangirling yeah. over him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> everything was blur and she was on focus. <laughs> no, I think uh, like, you know, certain things in life, you know, you're destined to. Yeah. Sort of, uh, whether it's marriage or whether it's music, I think uh, what you're bound to get is all written somewhere. Mm. Uh, you will, no matter how hard you try sometimes, you know, you may not get there. But without your knowledge, even marriage, it's just very, I, I mean, something that would have never happened because she's not from Mortua. Yeah. She is actually from uh, Kandy and originally they were studying in uh, Chilau area. Okay. And for some reason she moved to because her father was a cop. Right. So they kept on <laughs> moving from, uh, transferred from place uh. to place. So finally she was in Nugegode area studying, yeah. then she came to Moratua yeah. that particular day uh, to her show. aunt's place. Uh. That's how she came for the show. She didn't know much about the gypsies. But somehow she came and she wanted me to get an autograph uh, signed by me. So that's how we met. Uh. And it was something uh, that would have never happened. Yeah. Never happened. I wouldn't have never met her. You know, had she, I mean, not, not come to her aunt's place in Mororo that Destiny day. That is Destiny, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what were you singing at that time? Piti Kotapan was doubt? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Piti Kotapan was not <laughs> out. Tui at that time, uh, probably Obudu Tui was on some of these love songs and Kurumito and uh, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. 
Then then I married the girl. No, that was how during that time. But I don't think she knew anything about gypsies at that time. I don't think my wife knew anything about the gypsies. But she would have just come with some friends to sort of witness the show. But it was an open air thing. So certain things, you know, when I look back, I think it's destiny. Yeah, that's amazing. And I'm sure she would have gone back and said, Dana, Dana, where did you come from? I mean, love is good. Let's get into a break. We'll see you on the other side right here on A Date with Dana. This is High TV. I feel good. I knew that I wouldn't. I feel good. I knew that I wouldn't. Welcome back to the show. All right, in the recent past, we have seen some videos which sort of brought the whole family together, which is brilliant. <laughs> Even your grandma was on it, right? <laughs> Tell me about how was it to shoot? It was great because she's such a great sport. Like mm. not like us. Even during his like video shoot, some of like most of us sleep in corners, but grandma is there just clapping away Aww. for all his like you know. So she's always been like that. She wants to be part of it. You know? yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Always. Always. To be part of it. Now this Uswat the story has a strong link to her. Is it the Jujubes? Yeah, it was uh, grandpa's. Like grandpa, my 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 father, okay. my father's brother. Okay. Both How was it? Start. How was it? Was it a home recipe that became a initially, bread? Initially, okay. initially, it was a homemade thing. Like you know, I don't know how it came about, but they were. But my father was working for the postal department at that time. Right. And mom still gets a pension. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> my uncle was also involved in some company. I can't remember exactly where. But the thing is, uh, we were living in a very small house in somewhere in Luna at that yeah. time when they started the grocery thing. And somehow uh, it became big. Yeah. Well, and that song, I tell you, yeah. we all sing to it up to date. It's like Lugra one of those. Samami. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's still like a yeah. Sri Lankan commercial moment. No, you no, can no. never yes. crack that code. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Uh, now, just before we get into our next segment, how is it to be a part of such a huge family? And they're all so talented. And everyone who sings out of your family, we know that there's a gypsy blood. Talented, I don't think. We do, I, I don't consider. That any of us, even now, uh, the gypsies who started in 1970 with my four, uh, PR wasn't there in the band at the time, four brothers and two cousins. We were just very average, very average, and we had some blessing, you know, we had some luck. And uh, also, even today, I could still consider it's not the talent, it's not the talent. What you require is that blessing. With a little bit of talent, a lot of blessing, you blessing, you run Go the distance. Forward. That yeah. is true. Yeah. All right. Well, sometimes on this show, we take the time to go through their Facebook accounts. Now, he is not on Facebook, but Manisha is. <laughs> WTFB, right now. Welcome back. So, this is the time where we go down history a little bit. This is you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when was this? That was my first passport picture, but they never took us out of the country <laughs> until we were 16. I that was just taken in case. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you look really cute there. You look angry about something. Why is it? I always <laughs> looked like that when I was small, I think. Yeah. I'll give this to you. <laughs> Y'all can keep this. <laughs> Tell me about how many hats do you have? I probably have about 15. 20, but I don't keep all. No? When I use it for some time and I'm tired of it, uh, I give it to my friends. You swing it from the stage, no? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been seen without the hat while on stage? Back in the days? On stage, I have always been wearing the hat. Yeah. Just wanted to say, who designs his wardrobe nowadays? He <laughs> himself. Ah, really? Yeah. All your fashion <laughs> advice don't go? <laughs> no, no. This has been your staple look for many years. Well, I wear all fancy. Uh, all the way out uh, colors and all that. That is true. Your yeah. color schemes yeah. are brilliant. We <laughs> are <laughs> match today. Velvet and cream <laughs> cheese. Uh, <laughs> no, a person at my age wouldn't wear like that. You know, that is true. Uh, I agree. I like this all red velvet and cream yeah. cheese look. I'll give these pictures <laughs> to you all. Tell me about this. Ah, uh, yeah. That was um, uh, the ceremony that took place. How old were you and how old was she? Uh, she was 15. Huh? She was 15. Yes. Yeah. 15? 15. 
Lucky I was able to get married. Otherwise, they would have put me behind bars. Anyway. <laughs> Thank God, see, I was a cop, so. <laughs> Her father well. was a cop, so I was and able to get married. Yeah, yeah. I was wow. 30 at the time. 15, I can't believe it. Yeah. She was a child. Yeah, a child, yeah. Oh, so cute. Uh. But that means she loved you so much. <laughs> oh. Not that so much. I mean, we are compelled to get married at that time. We were in a, such a situation, we had to. <laughs> oh, right then. I got the feeling the plan. Okay, okay, okay. So, right. So, that's okay then. Tell me about your friendship with her. She's your cousin. She's, she's like my best friend from family. She's like a soulmate. She's my sister. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kiki. Ah, Kiki, yeah. Better known as Kiki. Yeah. yeah. This man I have seen who always saves the moment, right? Oh, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's Sometimes. the most loved in the family, I think. Yeah. yeah. And he's such a cool cucumber kind of a guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And sometimes I, uh, sometimes if you're a bit, let's say, into the moment, uh, Mr. Sunil, while you're performing, he is the one who will like somehow get you on stage and keep that, the show running. That's his role even in the family. Like oh, really? it's the he's family. helping, like like he's there for the adults just as much as he's there for us. Yeah. Well, people don't know Pial is the one who sort of keeps the, even the band with regard to, I mean, even small issues like he's the one who comes forward and he's the one who tells me sometimes I don't do it this way or don't do this or even the songs okay sometimes most of it even uh, we have just released a new song so he's the one who is sort of uh, running behind trying to get this song promoted you know I'm totally out from these mm. uh, modern things yeah. so he knows not that he knows but he is at least in somebody into this kind of uh, social web, media. web marketing, web marketing. Yeah. but he's definitely a kind man he has he a is, kind face yeah. and finally the lady of the moment <laughs> and it's amazing how much you all spoke about her <laughs> she is simply gorgeous mm -hmm. I met her at a uh, Peter's show which I was hosting for the old boys I saw her for the first time she and still I thought, keeps talking about it <laughs> she was simply gorgeous mm -hmm. she looked like an Indian actress in that <laughs> I think she has a breathtaking smile Thank and you. Mm. I think you are one lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> no, she is, I mean, more than her looks or anything like that. She, I'll tell you, she one hell of a woman. One hell of a woman. I think that's if not for her, I would have been broken into pieces. And she's the one who put me and the whole family together. She's a glue. I'm thankful to her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we need to wrap things up on the show. But before I go, I need to say uh, there are a few people who have changed how Sri Lanka is seen. I think you are one of those people. You are one of the um, one of the gems in our country. I'm, I'm trying to change certain things in Sri Lanka with that regard to the political situation, but very hard. But still, I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> but more than that, your entertainment has given so many people to laugh, to dance, to rejoice, to celebrate a moment. And as a true Sri Lankan, and that's remarkable. I, um, and like the moments where you get on stage, people just let loose. And there isn't an, there isn't any artist who will ever say, "Oh, gypsies." Everyone is so proud to know that you're from here and that mm. is remarkable. And I think uh, the way you speak, the way you carry yourself, the way you're so honest about everything is what has kept you there. And I'm so happy, Manisha, that I got to know you. Although she didn't like me at the start, by the way. <laughs> I need this on a close-up, please. Um, so what she did to me was, when I was, um, well, we were doing a commercial last year, and when she saw me, she was like, oh, Oh, she had the whole, uh, I don't know, like a Paris Hilton All moment. All of us are guilty of having preconceived yeah. notions about people. So, yeah. yeah. So then I started talking to her and she was like, oh gosh, I should have never spoken in this chatterbox. It's never going to shut up. <laughs> but we had such a great time and I got to know you and the fact that you're so Thank real, you. which is breathtaking. Thank you so very much. Thanks I'm so us. honored and humbled that you said yes to Thank the show. Thank you very much for uh, giving us the opportunity to be in this show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so Thank very you. much. Uh, it's a pleasure. We will see you with another cool episode to date with Danu. Till then you keep smiling, it's a wrap on the show.